Get 10% off all VV, Ecomi, and Omi merch at CavelAnderson.com using the code CHRISTMAS10. Our primary line will always be available while our limited edition section will only ever have 100 items total and will never be sold again. Get it while supplies last. Yo, what is going on, y'all? I'm Cavell Anderson, and we are back with another VV and Ecomi video. And this one, we're going to be checking out something interesting. So apparently, um, the CEO of Disney has actually come out, and he's been warning people something when it comes about something when it comes down to Star Wars. So what I'm hearing is that people are excited for the Star Wars franchise, and we're about to see some big, big moves being made with with Star Wars. Now, obviously, this is massive. This is massive because. The, the Star Wars fandom is insane. And, and the fact that the NFT craze is here and everybody's talking about NFTs, everyone's excited about it and stuff like that. This leads me to believe that more and more stuff happening with the on, on the Star Wars front can lead to some success with the Star Wars NFTs here on Vivi because they're already worth a crazy amount of money. Like these, these, these NFTs are performing very, very well, especially in comparison to a lot of the other NFTs. And that just goes to show you that people actually respect Star Wars. A lot of the collectibles and things like that, it really holds its value. Star Wars is one of those things where it's like, it's not a gamble, it's not a risk, it's not a question. Like Star Wars, people will buy Star Wars. And it's one of it's one of those brands. So yeah, I'm interested in seeing what's going on here. This was sent to me by one from one of you all. So yeah, shout out to everybody who's helped me get updated and letting me know what's going on in the community. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and turn on notifications so you stay updated. And yeah, let's jump straight into it, y'all. Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now December 19th of 2021 and we're only getting closer to the official release of the Book of Boba Fett in just a little over one week from now on December 29th. Oh, so it looks like December 29th. That's tomorrow. It looks like the Book of Boba Fett is coming out tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm actually excited to watch that. I'm gonna watch that. I knew that, I heard that it was coming out. Um, I don't watch uh, Disney Plus too much, but I'm gonna have to hop on there and see what's going on um yeah i mean a, a new show with like what i'm expecting is i'm expecting we already know that they their first partnership with disney was with disney plus what if we can expect something star wars related very very soon here as some type of surprise that would be dope that would be pretty sick and and then it's not really off brand for vivi look what happened with eternals look what happened with the spider-man movie like they, they they literally constantly releasing things um Paired with the real life thing like james bond like they, they release things that's kind of related to what's going on um in the media <clears throat> so with this type of strategy i wouldn't be surprised to see some star some more star wars stuff coming here we, i mean we got some more mickey mouse stuff which is actually performing much well much better than i thought that it would to be fair um it's interesting it's an interesting time right now with the nfts because it seems like people are starting to value the collectible over the mint count like, like the, the additions over the rarity none of that stuff seems to matter it seems to just really be about the collectible now so we're, we're moving into an interesting stage when it comes down to vv so yeah i mean anyway let's keep listening fans around the globe are finally going to be able to see exactly what rodriguez favreau and filoni as well as lucas put together to really kind of fill the gaps in between empire and return of the jedi as well as the events after episode six return of the jedi and how it enters into the mandoverse so basically the boba fett series is going to jump around a bit which is pretty exciting this is mike zero make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future star wars updates also by the way guys i am on twitter at mike zero one if you guys want to go ahead and give me a follow on there i do post a couple of entertaining things from time to time and really make sure to interact with you guys further so you don't remember my man's here this is the ceo of disney what's the deal with of course george john and dave and what's really been going on behind the scenes for the past number of months well we already know that they're working on the mandalorian season three and the ahsoka tano series simultaneously while they're actually preparing the pre-production phase for the mandalorian season four now we've talked about season four a couple of times here and there what they're going to be doing for season four that's going to be quite special is that it's not going to necessarily be called season four it's going to be called the man mandalorian with a subtitle so basically it's going to be the mandalorian blank whatever it may be 
in order to kind of market the fact that it's not just going to be about the Mandalorian, it's going to be about the Mandalorian and everybody associated with that character, such as Luke, Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, Boba Fett, and other characters jumping in that's going to work hand in hand. So beyond all of this, we already know that Disney CEO Bob Chapek has been doing a pretty good job at really allowing John and Dave to do as they please with the new Star Wars universe, not allowing Kathleen Kennedy to take control over all these new Star Wars stories and only having her involved with the Acolyte TV series, thankfully. However, given that Kathleen Kennedy is still having issues with the Acolyte TV show by Le Leslie Headland and trying to get back on schedule for the series, both John and Dave are moving along smoothly with their new Star Wars TV shows in development that will truly reunite the Star Wars fandom. Now, I subscribed, however, that recently Bob Chapek engaged in an interview to discuss the future of Star Wars and what John and Dave are really up to for these new Star Wars TV shows. Yeah, so it seems like they're they're really going hard when it comes down to the Star Wars. It seems like they're doing stuff that the Star Wars fandom and the community is actually supporting and backing as well. So I think that that's really good. And from the things that I've heard from the Disney CEO... I think that he definitely has a clear vision and understands what's going on. He knows what he's doing. Um, I actually liked hearing what he had to say about metaverses and things like that as well. I know some people were worried about, oh, this could be the biggest competition for Vivi and things like that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, like based on how he was talking, it sounded like he in talks with David Yu quite a lot, to be fair. Um, literally, the things that he was saying, it mirrored things that we've heard directly from David Yu himself. So um, to in order... Like hearing somebody at the level of the CEO of Disney literally saying things that we've heard from um, David Yu, I mean, that that's that's huge. That's major. So, yeah. Bob Chapek went on to warn fans about something with John and Dave's vision for Star Wars, where Bob Chapek went on to say that what both of these talented creators are putting together, I want to warn you, is going to be bold and unexpected and that there may be some controversial choices that will be made for the Star Wars installments on Disney+. Plus. We want to make sure that we will be borrowing many things from Star Wars Legends and visions from George Lucas at the core that's going to be used as source material. However, what I really, of course, also want to warn to the fans is that much of that Legends source material we will be using will not be 100% accurate to those stories and that many aspects will be changed here and there to better fit the story and some of the new characters becoming a part of the large world that John and Dave are putting together. We want to make sure that we are not misleading any fans out there about how we are going to be using Legends. For John and Dave, it's about cherry picking many of the Legends characters and placing them into these new eras and situations that take place in this timeline that Mr. Favreau created back in 2019. So this is interesting. They're, they're, <clears throat> they're not taking a route of exactly going the traditional the traditional route, like following the story um, exactly. They're, they're changing it up. They're adding their own flair to it which I think is, is interesting. I don't think that they're doing a terrible job. I think that this this latest Star Wars stuff has been really, really good and it's had a good reception um, from, from what I heard. I know my mom is a huge Star Wars fan and she loves it. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's too bad. It sounds like they're still trying to respect the OGs, respect the, the storyline and respect what everybody knows and loves while still trying to make it make sense for what's already been accomplished uh, in reality with the with the story so i mean it sounds fair to me it sounds like they have, they have a good approach now favreau of course thankfully however we are of course going to stay as true as possible to the star wars legends lore and all the material that was created before we brought before we actually bought lucasfilm i want to admit that we did make some mistakes in the past and when it came to the sequels however now it's my job to guide of course, those like John and Dave and what we need to do to evolve this brand into something truly spectacular. Bob Chapek went on to state that we're also looking at creating stories that will go out of range of what's to be expected for Star Wars that we believe is going to be very surprising to those that supported the franchise for decades. Now, let me just stop right here for one second. The thing about this that I think some fans might be a little on edge over is the fact that a lot of the legends, stories, characters, worlds, and scenarios that are going to be taken from those stories from the 1990s and the early 2000s and being placed into the Disney canon 
what Bob Chapek is warning us fans is that it's not going to be 100% accurate to a T. And that's understandable because at the end of the day, they never really got to start fresh just using Legends with the sequel trilogy movies. They kind of have to work around those films. And so basically what he's saying is that a lot of those Legends scenarios, right? A lot of those stories like from the Thrawn trilogy or Dark Empire or the New Jedi Order books. I mean, I do suggest that you guys check those out. But those actual stories are going to be used in a different light and will be as accurate as possible, but not 100% accurate. So don't expect, you know, legends to be used beat for beat in the new Star Wars universe. So moving on from this and what Chapek had to say, all right, he goes on to state that it's also worth noting that we want to warn fans also that the choices that we are going to make in many of these new TV shows and future films and projects are going to really create opportunities to eventually spawn new characters and new adventures that will branch from already established characters in the Star Wars lore. We are going to be making choices that will create big impacts on all the Star Wars trilogies. I believe that is one thing I want to warn to the fans the most about, that these new stories will change some views of established lore in the prequels, originals, and sequels, and beyond. We're additionally separate from all of this and what Chapek stated. So it seems like they have an idea that they, in the direction that they want to go in, and everything is pushing towards this grand narrative that they want to spin and move into the new generation <clears throat> now in my opinion i think that i don't know this could be a hit or miss type of thing leading the story somewhere because what if you lead the overall story somewhere that the fans don't won't respect and won't appreciate it going um but at the same time what if they do a great job this was written during a different time um the stories are kind of old so it maybe it it has some some new school flair to it maybe we we are a little bit more technologically advanced or evolved to the point where you could like fantasize even farther ahead than maybe you could even even back then so now we can we can imagine things farther and deeper than we could have imagined back then so i think it definitely leaves some room to you know, like to, to progress the story a little bit more and to, to take us a little bit farther into the future. But I mean, like I said, it's a hit or miss. Like you could completely screw up what what um, George Lucas actually tried to do here. So, I mean, it, it, it is interesting. It's interesting. It's a big risk. But I think that uh, big risk usually leads to big rewards. You need to take big risks sometimes. Chapek is getting ready to announce new Star Wars films at celebration of 2022 this May. That is, go that is actually going to stretch multiple years to fill the roadmap of the franchise for sure. In addition to all of that, Bob Chapek is also preparing to make big announcements for the Ahsoka Tano series at Star Wars Celebration of 2022, giving fans a little bit more information on the full cast and, of course, what's really happening with Ezra Bridger and Grand Admiral Thrawn's project. So beyond all of this, what's really exciting about what Chapek had to say here is the fact that these new stories will not only have impacts on the originals and the prequels in a positive sense, thankfully, it's not going to be done in a negative sense. They only want to make us view those movies in a different positive way. And they're going to be changing some of the actual Star Wars lore that's intact, kind of giving more meaning to certain things. The thing that I'm excited about is the fact that these new stories are going to have a big impact on the sequel trilogy movies. To me, in my mind, the sequels are very flawed. They're extremely flawed, in my opinion, and they really do need some reworking. And that's exactly what John and Dave are doing with the Mandoverse and how it's going to work its way into the sequel trilogy and kind of changing aspects of that. I know some fans out there are rolling their eyes right now saying, why in the world would John and Dave want to roll things into the sequel trilogy? Well, basically, John Favreau signed on for Star Wars in the first place because he didn't really agree with Ryan Johnson's take on The Last Jedi and really wants to fix some things about Luke Skywalker and exactly what he has really been up to of course, between the events of episode six and episode seven and everything that comes in between of seven, eight, and nine. That to me, I think is interesting. The fact that John Favreau wants to change some meaning to all of that, you know, the overall structure of why Luke Skywalker 
you know, went into hiding. John Favreau is going to also be changing that as well. We talked about that a couple of months to a year ago, actually. But anyways, I think that what they're ultimately trying to achieve here, especially what Bob Chapek unveiled, is that they really want to make it concrete and known to fans that the Legends material, the source material from Legends that's coming into Star Wars, all right? It is not going to be 100% accurate. And I think that's to be expected anyways, but he just wants to let the fans know that they are going to be making them as accurate as they can. But given the situation and given where they are, based upon the consequences of the sequels being in existence, they have to work around that and really kind of implement those stories in different time periods, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, this is pretty interesting. It's kind of tough to do and to accomplish kind of what needs to be accomplished with with stuff like Star Wars, with any film, because you you basically have, you have people who have, you've done the film already, this film exists, so if something wasn't done well, you can't just go back and have a do-over, it's like, this is a story that was told, this is the narrative that was spun, so you gotta kinda be delicate when you're switching up the narrative and changing things, but um, ultimately, this just sounds very bullish for Star Wars, Star Wars as a whole, and I think that we should be looking forward to some Star Wars NFTs hitting BB based on all this excitement that's going on in the Star Wars community right now. So I'm definitely looking forward to this, seeing what Disney is actually going to come up with um, and 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 the, some of the things that Disney is going to do. I'm hoping to see... Um, the, the, we're dropping Disney stuff right now. We we had some good drops from Disney. We've had uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, we've had the... Um, the what's his name? Uh, is it Hawkeye? We've had Hawkeye. We had that little poster drop. Um... We had the the Mickey Mouse, the new Mickey Mouse drop. So we were having some stuff from 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 Disney come 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 out. So I'm looking forward to that. Let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. I think that this is going to be very very big for the Star Wars NFTs. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications so you stay updated. And yeah, I'm gonna catch you all on the next one. Peace out, Joe.